In today's episode, we're going to talk about the TikTok killer, Zachary Latham. Whether people care to admit it or not, everybody wants to be famous or has at least thought of it at one point in time. For 18 year old Zachary Latham, he posted a few viral videos on TikTok and got the famous bug. The videos he posted of bullying his neighbors always did so well and his followers craved more. So would his hunger for fame drive him to do the unthinkable? Zachary Latham was a 16 year old guy who had just moved in with his grandparents after losing his mom. As sad as the situation sounds, this dude was kind of a jerk. Zachary was the dictionary definition of a reckless driving, car obsessed, troublesome teenage boy. He had a short temper and several weapons he shouldn't have had, especially given his unpredictable state. Zachary would collect several counts of assault, terroristic threats, and criminal mischief over the course of the next few years. So Zachary and his grandparents lived in a house on Thornhill Road in Vineland, New Jersey. On that same street lived the Durham family, which consisted of 51-year-old correctional officer William, his wife Catherine, and their two sons. William took note of Zachary's careless driving, and honestly, everyone in the neighborhood did because he was constantly revving his engine and speeding around in his Corvette going upwards of 100 miles per hour in a residential area. But out of everyone in the area, William was the most upset about Zachary's driving because one, I'm sure he was worried about Zachary driving like that around his kids and others. Two, being a cop, he's most likely seen the horrific effects reckless driving can have on people. William had apparently confronted Zachary and his family on multiple occasions about his driving. Now that's a sensitive subject for everyone, but for Zachary, that really ticked him off. At first, William spoke to Zachary's grandparents about his frustrations. Days later, Zachary went over to William's house to apologize and say he'd be more careful in the future. But I'm guessing that was something Zachary's grandparents forced him to do because even though he apologized, he didn't make any changes to his driving. And now it was almost like a game for Zachary. He was one of those people that loved to stir the pot, so knowing his engine revving and tire screeching was getting under people's skin, that made him want to do it more often. Over the next several months, the tension between Zachary and William and their families grew. When Zachary was 17 years old, he was emancipated, got married, married to a girl named Sarah and joined the National Guard. Whoa, that's a lot going on. Even though Zachary made some major life decisions, he was still his immature, instigating self. He and William were still on bad terms, and by now, TikTok was a huge thing, and of course, Zachary was on it. He would post videos about his car, being in the military, and so on and so forth. Okay, before I get too far down a rabbit hole about that, let me get back to the important parts of the story. All you need to know is that Zachary was on TikTok and he wanted to go viral by making videos of his own. Zachary was an attention seeker since day one, so to him, there's nothing better than getting thousands of likes and comments pouring in on the video that he made. So that's when he was like, what if I record my interactions with William and Catherine Durham? On April 6, 2020, Zachary was speeding down the road, per the use, and Catherine Durham came outside to confront him. Zachary then whipped out his phone and started recording his verbal argument with her. He was being extremely rude and disrespectful, not taking Catherine seriously at all. And look, I know sometimes neighbors can be annoying and nosy, but Zachary had been doing this for almost two years. It was only a matter of time before he hurt someone or got in an accident, and it seemed like Catherine was just trying to get him to stop so she could prevent something bad like that from happening. So as Catherine was talking to Zachary, he just kept calling her Karen over and over again, which if you don't know what Karen means, look it up on Urban Dictionary. Zachary posted the video and it quickly went viral with over 3 million views. People were going off in the comments about ways to get back at Catherine. People in the comments were telling Zachary to egg Catherine's house, slash her tires, and continue to record and harass her. A few days later, Zachary drove up to William and Catherine, who were out in their front yard, and said, hey Karen, we went viral. But one viral video wasn't enough. Zachary had to keep his new followers engaged with more content of Catherine and William. The Durham son, William Jr., found out about what was going on, so he tried to intervene, but Zachary pulled out the old phone and recorded another TikTok. In this one, William Jr. got so upset with Zachary that he threatened to pull him out of his car, but then Zachary told him not to because he had a blade on him. He typed out the caption, Karen's son found this video went viral and tried taking me out of the car. He posted the video to TikTok, followed by another video of the blade he allegedly had on him that day. Over time, Zachary got even more obnoxious with his posts. He threatened to post personal details about the Durham's, like their address and full names and stuff. The Durham's went to the police and tried to take action against Zachary, but since this happened during the peak of the pandemic, it was hard getting anything done. Courts were way behind on things and the police were spread thin. It was like there was nothing anyone could do. On May 4th, 2020, the younger Durham's son, Gage, was out riding his bike when Zachary swerved his car and almost hit him. It seemed intentional. Well, that was the tipping point for the Durham's. Later in the day, the whole family made a plan to confront Zachary. While Zachary was out driving with two of his friends, William blocked the street entrance with his car. As Zachary pulled up, Catherine walked up to his car to speak with Zachary about almost hitting her son. This time, she took a page out of Zachary's book and recorded the interaction on her phone. But Zachary didn't like that one bit. He got out of his car and started hitting Catherine. 
He slapped her in the face, elbowed her in the chest, ripped her phone out of her hands, and pushed her. So after the whole thing with Gage almost getting hit and now Catherine getting beat up by Zachary, the Durhams have had enough. All four family members went over to Zachary's house to confront him. Zachary's wife, Sarah, warned the family against standing on their property. She said, I promise you, you better back up because you're not going to like what's coming out. But the Durhams were so fed up they didn't care. They stepped closer to the house and that's when Zachary popped out with a stun weapon and several blades. From what I could gather from the reports in this case, Zachary fired his stun gun at the Durhams and tried to jab one of the sons with a blade. William then ran up and grabbed Zachary, trying to prevent him from harming his family any further. But during their scuffle, Zachary slashed William across the arm with his blade. Also, just to paint the full picture for you, Sarah was recording the whole thing and Zachary's two friends that were in the car with him earlier were also there. So after cutting William's arm, Zachary ran into his garage with his two buddies. William followed them there and continued fighting Zachary. Zachary fired his stun gun multiple times before pulling out a blade and jabbing William repeatedly. The men continued going at each other and during the brawl, Zachary suffered several hard blows to the head and neck among other body parts. But being the narcissist he was, Zachary had to be the one to finish the fight. He dug his blade into William Sr.'s armpit, which pierced his lung. By that point, the fight was pretty much over and Zachary decided he'd call 911. He told the dispatcher, there's blood all over the place. I just got assaulted and jumped. He said they came with trucks, came on my property with guns. My windpipe was crushed in and I got stomped on and choked by like 10 people. He then went on to say that these assailants came on his property with firearms and said they were going to kill him which is a lie. After that, Zachary said, there was four people, which directly contradicts the part where he said he was jumped by 10 people. Police officers and paramedics arrived as quickly as they could and William was rushed to the hospital, but his wounds were too severe. At 9.19 p.m., William was pronounced lifeless. Catherine, William Jr. and Gage burst into tears and it was just a tragic scene. The Durhams never expected the confrontation to end this way. And they were always so worried that Zachary would hurt someone, but they didn't think it would be like this. So Zachary was first taken to a hospital since he had also suffered injuries from the fight, but once he was released, the cops took him straight to jail. He was charged with one count of first degree manslaughter, two counts of second degree aggravated assault, and several counts relating to weapons. But Zachary wasn't the only one who faced criminal charges. The Durham family was hit with trespassing and assault charges too. This was a pretty hot topic amongst case followers because technically Sarah did warn the Durhams to get off their property, but at the same time, a lot of people saw the Durhams as victims. They'd exhausted all other efforts to have an intervention and felt this was their only way to get to him. And in regards to the assault charges, it seemed like they were fighting back when Zachary went after them. But then again, he went after them when they were on his property. Ah, this is so conflicting. But even though I can't make up my mind, the town of Vineland could. Pretty much every resident stood behind the Durhams and tried to support them in any way. I mean, their family member just abruptly lost their life, so I can see why people wanted to be there for them. In mid-May, Zachary had his court hearing. His lawyer said the event was a horrific tragedy and claimed his client only acted out of self-defense. Then he said, to a very, very fair extent, the Durhams visited this great sadness upon themselves. I cannot get over how rude and insensitive that is. Like, give these people some grace. They just lost a family member and your client is still alive. Zachary's lawyer continued on by saying the Durham saw Zachary as the James Dean of the neighborhood and made it out to seem like they overreacted just because his car was loud and he liked to drive fast. When it was time for the Durham's lawyer to speak, they requested Zachary's charges be changed from manslaughter to murder because this was an intentional premeditated act. They basically said Zachary was a fame hungry monster who did this all for the clout on TikTok. They believed he and Sarah lured the Durham's out of their house on purpose that day and the self-defense claim didn't hold up. In an inquiry written by the Durham's attorneys, they said, if Latham was in fear for his or Sarah's safety, they both would have retreated inside, called the police, and stayed there. They did not because their intent was to lure the Durhams there, attack them, and record it for TikTok. So after Zachary's hearing, the court found it unnecessary to keep Zachary in custody leading up to his trial, so he was released on these terms. That he would not visit his old neighborhood, especially not the Durham's house, and that he would get a job. This decision caused an uproar in the community because everyone believed this guy was a threat to their town. But not long after he was released, Zachary moved to Naples, Florida, so at least the people of Vineland didn't have to see him or interact with him. So Zachary followed orders and got a job as a car salesman, but he continued posting to TikTok, and most of his videos were about the ongoing case. Somewhere along Along the way, the Durham's home address was leaked on TikTok, and after that, the family started to get low-key harassed. In September of 2020, a judge ordered Zachary to stop speaking about the case on social media. He was like, all right, cool. 
But then he just made another account and continued posting about the case. Did he really think they weren't going to find out? While Zachary was in Florida, he was acting like he was this big celebrity and bragged about how he was a cop killer, which definitely feels like Zachary was trying to cash in on the current climate given the recent stories of police corruption. But he got his few seconds of fame and in January of 2021, it was back in handcuffs for Zachary. This time, it was for threatening a motorist with a BB weapon that looked like an AK-47. My God, he just won't stop. Over some legal back and forth, it was determined that Zachary would remain in jail until his hearing. At the time we're filming this, that's the most recent update. This case is very fresh and still ongoing, so if you hear or see any updates on the case beyond this point, leave them in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Killer Bites.